Hello and welcome back to the Early Bath Football Podcast, episode two of the new season. And I've just thought there, as we do the countdown and then when I go live, I get them really good at that. So it normally, you know, I, I press the, the the ticker, the countdown, and within about two or three seconds, I'm already gone live. And now we're waiting like a good 25 seconds. Maybe I should leave it for like less time next time. I was thinking um, exactly the same. And also, yeah. Ting, do you not think the, the countdown is very E17? Vibes, it is, isn't it? Isn't it? <laughs> it's On really weird. I guess, yes, yeah, like Christmas vibes. I, I don't know. End the should countdown, get, yeah. viewers. Let us know. <laughs> let should us we get know. rid of the countdown? Yeah. Should we? Yeah, I think we should. And uh, if if not next time, um, I'll come out with my big like fluffy yeah. hoodie. <laughs> yeah, I'll come uh, in like a a farmer's white farmer's cap or something <laughs> like that. Yeah, maybe if you've got to go, to go. Yeah. <laughs> just get just get a snow machine as well. Yeah, just exactly. Our yeah. faces. Exactly. That. Oh God, crazy. Um, anyway, yeah, we're back for episode two. We we were so glad to see Dan and Leif back, and now they're gone. Uh, Josh is actually working; he's working hard. Dan's on oh. the way back to this house uh, right now. I think he was in in Whitney over the weekend. So, yeah, uh, they are not here, um, and people like everyone else is away. And you know, we haven't seen Ed or Jack yet this season. Um, Owen's too big time for us, if I'm being honest. He's way too cool for us. So, who knows if we'll see Owen? It'd be great if we do, um, but we'll see. Uh, I'm joined today, but anyway, by Chris. Hello, Chris. How is it going? Yeah, it's not going too badly. I mean, I, I do want to make this comment very quickly. Go on, I, please do. I, I, Alan Shearer has won Pun of the Year. Oh, his, it's great, isn't it? It was for his very quality. Good. Why don't you come on over, Valerie? And I wanted to have an open question for you boys. But oh. not, not non-football related. What oh. version of Valerie do you prefer? The one by the Zootons or the one by Amy Winehouse? Two very good versions of the song, but I just want to know your personal preference. I have views, but Ash, do you want to do you want to go? I'm, I'm going to show my lack of um, music knowledge and just go for the more recent Amy Winehouse version. Um, rest in peace, by the way. Rest in R.I.P. Um, I, I I think for it's very similar. I think to Doctor Who, right? You know when people <laughs> say. Go. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> you know when people say, "Oh, who's your favourite doctor?" David Tennant, Matt Smith, Christopher Eccleston, all that jazz. Peter Capaldi, not Jodie Whittaker. I'm sorry, she victim of bad writing. I feel, but you've sort of got to know respect. You know, you got to respect Christopher Eccleston for what he did to bring Doctor Who back, and that gave us David Tennant. I feel like Amy Winehouse made Valerie sort of mainstream again, and. You know, now I can appreciate the Zootons version. You know, it's sort of like, a, you know, you can't have sort of one without the other, I feel. Um, that's my view. If I had to choose, though, I would probably say Amy Winehouse. Fair, fair uh, enough. For fair that enough. reason. Chris, um, it was your open question, but what is your open answer? But I, I, I'm actually against you boys on this one. I, I, I actually prefer the Zootons version, but like I said, they're both great versions of the song. They're both great versions. And I it's that Roy it. Ferdinand meme, isn't it? It's, uh, you know, just let him play, you know, Messi, Ronaldo, uh, <laughs> you know, just live in the moment. Or what, I can't remember what he says. I really can't remember what he says. Yeah. But no, I, I just thought I'd bring that up just because, like I said, great, one of the, probably the greatest pun on Match of Day ever. Yeah. Just, uh, that's, it, a, that's, a, Wright, that's a very big call, that is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Ian Wright loved it. He was in tears. He really was. Um, it was a very good pun. I only I saw it um, earlier today, or maybe yesterday, like yesterday night, very late on the board. And I was like, That's "Superb day one." Alan Shearer knows what's going on this season. I'm expecting big things from Alan. It's 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 about time he's done something for the Premier League as well. I feel <laughs> uh, so. Puns is what his his legacy is definitely going to be, right? <laughs> um, yeah, and and also Ash, how are you? How are you? How was your weekend? Did you Commonwealth this weekend? No, no, I was in uh, I was in Manchester. Actually. You were in Manchester, and I was I was saying months. to you, you Ting, that I was I came back on the train, um, and there were a bunch of uh, Wickham Wanderers fans ah, on on the train. Oh. Genuinely, it was weird because like someone walked past me in their sort of like blue like checkered shirt. I don't think I'd ever seen anyone wear a Wickham <laughs> shirt before. So for like like two minutes, I was like, what is that a team? And then, like down down the end of the like carriage, they started chanting about chairs and uh, you know, all sorts of other shit. Like they are that. the chair boys. The aren't chair they? boys, Wickham. Uh, but they lost three 0 to Bolton, so uh, yeah. Fuck them. What does chair boys mean? Is that genuinely boots. just they made chairs, or they like so. chairs? <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> Who knows? I, I could they... care less about Wickham, to be honest. Oh wow, okay, Chris. It's a fair point. <laughs> um, 
<laughs> yeah, they really did us in that uh, playoff final, didn't they? Oh, God. Not very bad. Say no more. <laughs> can, we end, can we end the pod now and cry? No, I don't know. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> we'll, talk about, we'll talk about Oxford later. Um, but the first thing is the Premier League is back or was back. It is back. Um, past, present, future tense. It was back over the weekend. It was absolutely fantastic um, to see it back, I thought. Um, I was actually away in Brighton all weekend, so I was very intermittent in terms of my Premier League consumption uh, over this weekend. But I thought we'd just do a bit of time just discussing what, you know, the highs of the low, the life and times of the Premier League match day one uh, or match game week one or whatever we want to call it um, before we go into some relegation predictions, which I think is always very important because I have, I did some research and I did your, I found your last year's relegation picks, which is very interesting. Um, but Chris, what caught your eye in the Premier League this weekend? It's been a long time since I've asked that to you. Uh, well, I might as well talk about the team that's behind me. I might as well oh, talk about good. Arsenal. And I, I must say, the first 30 minutes Friday night, Arsenal were class. I did actually they, catch the first half an hour of that game whilst before making dinner on Friday. Yeah. I thought that Arsenal were very good. Yeah. Sharp, and, I thought, I thought more than yeah, anything. Yeah, like, like, like Jesus, like, he was causing the, the Palace defence. He was running ragged in that. And um, like, to, to be fair, the, the first goal was a very easy goal. I think Vieira would be very disappointed with the defence for that one because Zinchenko has left you know, in acres at the back post and he's putting it back into a good area and this an easy finish from Martinelli. And then Aaron Ramsdale made me a bit nervous when he... Um, a little bit shaky. Like, a little bit shaky, you know what I mean? Like with his kicking and that. And I felt that that sort of got Crystal Palace back into the game. But I, I tell you what, William, William Saliba, for a 21-year-old, what a, mm. what a debut that is. I mean, outstanding performance and rightfully given man of the match. And... It was interesting what Arteta said afterwards as well, saying, you know, we're still actually looking to strengthen the team because usually with, with Arsenal, like, they, they've already spent quite a fair bit of money this summer and usually that's when they sort of, like, rein it back in a bit. But Arteta's like, no, we're still trying to identify, you know, players that can help improve. Where where would you think Arsenal, having watched that game, where do you think Arsenal need improving, uh, Chris? Uh, I think I think central midfield, whether it be like someone like either like a deep line playmaker or just like another blocker in there, because mm. like as as much as Xhaka did all right on Friday night, and obviously Party did all right Friday night as well, I still think that they just need that little bit of depth, sort of in that position. Like, and you don't really want to drop someone like Erdegaard back in there because Erdegaard is good in that sort of number ten role, and obviously you got the likes of Smith Rowe that can also play in the number ten role when he's back fit. In that, so I, I think, uh, I mean, if I if I had to if I had to pick a player myself, I'd I'd love Yuri Tielemans to play for Arsenal, yeah. just because like he does that deep line playmaker role so well. For Leicester I feel City you've and... got to be like that in the, in in modern football now that you can't just be sort of that blocker. Um, yeah. Or if you can't, if you are, you have to be very good. But I feel like gone are the days where you can just do the blocking and leave it to other people and just clean up. You have to sort of add that element to you, I guess, like Tielemans does. Um, you know, sort of like Matic is very good, I think, at just breaking up play. But in terms of playmaking, maybe not so good, someone like that. But yeah. I feel you have to add that to your game. And Party and Xhaka, very good at what they do, but playmaking, maybe less so. Yeah. Yeah, no, I 100% agree with you on that. I mean, yeah. I mean, you could argue, well, you've already got the playmaker for further forward in Erdegaard, but you still need someone that can help string. Just link it up. Link it, link it up, yeah. Yeah. Um, Ash, did you uh, watch that Arsenal game? Yeah, I did. I thought they were good. Um, completely agree with Chris. I thought actually Palace were were good as well. I think they were really sort of, it was a genuinely like decent game, good competitive between mm. both sides. Um, I, I think Arsenal can improve still. That If you look at their bench, it's really not that good. And I think that's kind of, was exemplified by Art had to not really wanting to bring on any subs till what was it the late 80 or well, the early 80 minutes which suggests that he doesn't really trust some of his bench i know they got a couple of injury i think smith rose injured but he, he doesn't trust pepe and i would suggest that given that their forward line is quite young although very exciting they probably could do with some experience in that position uh, yeah. maybe any of the front three really whether it's a a winger a striker or whatever i'd try and get some it, it was interesting because they were linked with uh Marx Asensio earlier in the window and I've I know he's some might say he's a bit past it but I'd 
I don't personally agree with that, but I think he would have been a good kind of player, a player that can play sort of all those four positions and has experience of uh, being a winner. Uh, mm-hmm. So I think that would have been a good signing, but it doesn't look like it's going to happen. But yeah, a winger for me. But Arsenal were very good. Um, Arsenal, Arsenal looked good. Um, very, uh, very young squad, but on a, on a sort of a relatively tangent on this. But have you guys watched the Arsenal documentary yet on on Amazon Prime? The All or Nothing. Uh- I haven't had time to, to be fair. Do you not want to, Chris? I think is the. <laughs> it, it, it's one of them that I, I'm a bit 50 50 on it. I do kind of want to see, like, especially what happens with like a Bamiang. Yeah. Yeah. Like, and that sort of like off the pitch and that. But then it's kind of like, oh, do I want to put, put myself like through that sort of thing? Barnes, what were your uh, what were your IMDb review of uh, of Arsenal All or Nothing? The, uh, the By the way, it's nothing. Yeah. Uh, nothing. No spoilers. <laughs> Spoiler I'll give it. I'll, I'll give it like a a seven. I think the all the all or nothing series in general, which Prime do it, are not that good. And to, well, mm. they are good because, like, to be honest, they could put out any content and it would be good because we. It's, don't it's see one of those things. It's club. any football. Oxford United put a beh- moments you missed thing on YouTube, and yeah. it's literally just highlights of the game. And I'm like, this is incredible. This is the best content I've ever seen, and it's literally just the highlights. It's the exactly. moments that I have indeed not missed because you posted it. So it's, yeah, it's yeah. I really don't. I don't think they get as much insight as say like Sunder until I die, which I thought mm. was just such a a much more transparent view of what's. You get this sort of idea when you watch the Amazon ones that the clubs kind of had a look over it and said, "Yeah, we're not we're not showing that." Yeah. What, what I did notice actually, I don't know if this would be a theme coming forward in later episodes, but it's very quiet in that Arsenal dressing room. Not a lot of them talk very much. I don't know if that's just an editing thing or. But there's not a lot. Didn't come across there were lots of characters. I've only the watched room. the first twenty minutes of episode one, uh, so okay. I can't really, <laughs> I can't really talk. So at the minute, but I can, re- I can relay back information once I go back and keep that in mind. But yeah, like Chris said, the Obama Yang thing will be, will be interesting. as one of the more yeah. controversial sort of moments in the season for them. Fantastic, um, Ash. Premier League. It was back this weekend. What was the the sort of the number one thing that caught your eye? That made you think, wow, Premier Premier League is the Barclays is back, baby. Oh, it's got well. <laughs> the elephant in the room is that Manchester United uh, lost the the, the new era of Manchester United. Uh, yes, the new say. era where they played practically exactly the same team that they played last <laughs> year. The, Fred and McTominay. Me and Chris were just talking before we went live about yeah. um, how Ten Hag had all, all that summer, and he basically picked pretty much the same eleven. Um, it just added sort of Martinez and took Varane out. Mm. I mean, I, what to say on them? I, I, again, another thing I'll say to Chris, what frustrates me is a lot of, after the match, a lot of the chat from like the likes of, you know, Gary Neville and on social media was like, you know, the usual sort of like, fuck the Glazers, like all oh, this is a, the Glazers' fault. I'm just thinking like, you, Ten Hag has had all something, he's picked that line, he's like play Ericsson in the false nine and then mm. play that midfield, which we know doesn't really work based on what we saw in the past two seasons, yeah, like being yeah. honest, like you didn't have to pick that. And I'm really, really disappointed in Ten Hag because I was really looking forward to sort of seeing a new era and a lot of changes, maybe change in formation, change in style, uh, imagining new players. And was it just very, I didn't exactly watch the game, was the it very same. similar? They started off well. And I think to me, the moment the game changed was that Bruno missed the, a very good he chance. Did. Yeah, that's and the highlight of that. Heads just dropped after that. I think they really looked to Bruno as someone in that dressing room who they believe is one of their best players. So to see him, you know, miss what should really be a routine chance for him, you could just see the heads dropped. And then Chris mentioned as well Dallo. I think he gave away the ball in like the first minute in his own box. <laughs> like that's that's not a good sign. And I think I think Brighton were genuinely really good as well. Let's not let's not forget that it was a, it was a tough opening fixture for a new manager, but. They were shit. Yeah, let's <laughs> be honest. Were, were Brighton missing uh, Basuma and Cucurella? Do you think? But did Chris, did you watch the game as well? Yeah, yeah I, I watched the game. To be fair, they've already got the replacement for Basuma and Caicedo. He was class. He's he, he, fantastic, isn't he? He, he was. He's probably one of the best players on the pitch, if not the best player on the pitch yesterday. Like he just, he just completely ran the midfield for Brighton. And that, considering, like again, me and Barnes are talking beforehand and. It felt like Brighton were playing quite a few players out of position. Like I didn't realise like Lex McAllister was like playing like centre mid, and obviously they had Trossard like left wing back. Like yeah, in, in like an ideal world, you'd rather have probably those two a little bit further forward because again, like we're trying to figure out the formation. Like I think they went like three four two one, 
mm. for like the formation. Yeah, played, and, yeah. and another player that deserves huge credit is Danny Welbeck. I thought he was quality. Yes, I mean you got it. Was, I, it was a penalty, right? The 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 oh, it was Martinez a stonewall penalty. Yeah, goes into his back, pushes him yeah, in his back. It, it's a stonewall that, penalty, right? Yeah, that's it's that stupid idiot Paul Tierney. He's, he's <laughs> one of the worst refs in the Premier League, and and, and a shaved look looks absolutely atrocious as well. Yeah, it's not right? good look, is it? It's no, it's look. not. It's not. But um, I, I will comment on like Harry Maguire. I do think he's getting a lot of unjust crit- criticism from like the Manchester mm. United fans. Like I think they're. Bit scapegoating in a bit because I, I thought he was one of Man United's better players yesterday. And... It was his fault for the second goal, though. I think. Um, I, I don't. I don't agree with that. I. I, I think. think... Go on. Go on. Go on. No, you no. Go, you please, go. Ash. You say why it's his fault, and I'll. I'll because I'll come back. I think. Uh, Tross. Uh, I can't remember what, what the goals. Are. Is it the first goal? It's the first goal because I think Trossard plays it across, and um, Welbeck makes that run, which is, he runs between Martinez and Maguire. Martinez follows him, uh, and obviously Martinez is the left centre back, isn't he, for Manchester United? And Maguire was technically the right centre back, I think, in this situation. Maguire should be busting a gut to cover Martinez's position, which he's left. Uh, and there was a spare man in the box, which was oh, I don't know, who was the spare man in the box? Maybe was was it? I think it was Lallana who was running it might in, have been, yeah. and then obviously the so ball went. So Shaw had right. to, yeah, Shaw sees that and tries to get to Lallana. Which means that he loses his man, which was obviously Pascal Gross, and that I think that's how that situation transpired. Maguire just when you when you see the highlights, he's jogging like no centre back should be jogging like when yeah. the balls when they're when they're facing their own goal, they should not be jogging. That's like it's a rule, it's a big rule for me. Like as a defender, there's always something you could be doing, right? Yeah. But please, uh, Ash, I'd like to hear your. Of oh, course, go on. Yeah, I, I was about to say, all right, you might have made a mistake for the first goal, but at, at least he was actually doing stuff in the yeah, game. What, yeah. what, what was Sancho doing? What was Rashford doing? They might as well, like Bruno after that chance, what was he doing? Yeah. Like those, those, and then, like, 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 I know Barnes said earlier, like the two midfielders weren't great. Like the two mm-hmm. fullbacks weren't great either. And like a lot of people like rave about Martinez's performance. I didn't think he was that good, to be honest. No, he, was, he, was, he was rubbish. He, yeah. he was way worse than Maguire. That's why I couldn't understand. This. I agree, completely yeah. agree with you, Chris. They, when you look at sort of social media after the game, you saw a lot of criticism of Maguire, and obviously we saw a lot of that. Some of it justified, in fairness, last last season. Yeah. And you just think you look at that Martinez performance, and yes, yeah, his first game, so I'm not writing him off at all. I'm sure it'll be mm. it turn out to be a good signing, but he was bad, and he got bullied by I thought by Danny Welbeck. Just going back to that, but. Maguire yeah, thing. Gone. I'm not not necessarily saying it wasn't his fault, and I haven't looked into it in that much depth. But I just think, in general, on those kind of goal, or just when you concede a goal, anyway, usually you defend as a team. You, yeah, you yeah. know, and you can't. Dallas is also not anywhere near close. Dallas should yes. not be letting that type of ball go through him, basically. And on, on the second goal, especially, you just see that Brighton, the Brighton players on the break, just come through United's whole team completely and the, that back four, so Maguire and Martin, all of them are left completely exposed to like two yeah. players running at them and at that point you've essentially got two decisions like, am I going to step up or yeah. am I going to drop off and drop off and drop off until you know you end up in your own goal mm. Maguire decides to step up and yeah. then Martinez drops back and you have that situation <laughs> where they, they've they never played before in fairness yeah. in a competitive game and then obviously then Welbeck gets in so I don't know. I thought Maguire was one of the... He wasn't great, but, you know, probably 6 out of 10. He, he was all right. I didn't think... You know, they could put Varane in. They still would have lost that game, in my opinion. But He's easy to scapegoat Maguire, as it's also been very easy to scapegoat Wan-Bissaka, um, who else? Shaw was obviously a bit of a sort of scapegoat last year. Varane, Ronaldo. I think at United, there's a lot of shifting the blame to players, uh, and it's quite easy to do that, I think, at Manchester United right now. Um, it's uh, it it doesn't look great for Manchester United, um, but still got a bit of the transfer window left. They, some weird bids going into like seven point six million for Arnautovic, oh, uh, Rabio. Yeah, can we talk about these these? Bids? Yeah, if if, if, uh, if if Arnautovic and Rabio are the answer, what is the question, Chris? Uh, what on earth are we doing? <laughs> that, I mean, Ar- Arnautovic, he, he's nearly thirty four. He, He's got an absolutely terrible attitude. Like, like West Ham got, I think, got offered back to West Ham after his stint in China. And West Ham, like, no, we don't want him back because he just caused so much hassle in that change room. Like, what was it? He signed a new deal, then six months later, he wanted to leave. Yeah. 
and that like he, and and like just like some of the stuff like he like does on the pitch as well like obviously he got banned euros like he said something to what like one of the players didn't he and yeah. I, obviously i can't really repeat what he said on here please but yeah please don't yeah like it's just uh, i know like to be fair like rabbi rabbi could be a good sign but i i think like they need someone to you know you know sign another midfielder to go along with him but I also do want to go back to the whole McFred like situation. And uh, the fans are saying, "Ah, oh, uh, McTominay and Fred don't fit Ten Hag's system." What did Ten Hag pick them then? Like, he, yeah. in my opinion, like he should he should have picked Van der Beek because obviously he's worked with Van der Beek, and Van der Beek will know his style of football. Yeah, yeah. And and it, all right, he played Championship football last season, but James Garner's perfect for Ten Hag's system. Deep line playmaker who can put in a tackle. And that I mean, Man United fans still living in fantasy land that they think they're going to get De Jong. It's like, well, oh, that's still work, going on. I forgot about that. Yeah, it's like it's like work with what you got. You got a good young academy player in James Garner. Give him a chance. It's weird because there's been a few managers now, and Fred and McTominay always get picked. There's obviously something on the training ground which managers are seeing, and multiple managers are seeing, and it's a, a, like a good thing, obviously. But I don't know. It's it's weird. I, I don't know what. It must be absolutely unbelievable in training. And then on the on the out on Nartovich thing, you know, you've got someone who is, or you've got Ronaldo, right? For all his arrogance and all his uh, ups and downs, at least he has got the talent of Cristiano Ronaldo. With Mark Nartovich, you're getting the exact same thing, but the talent of Gary Taylor Fletcher. It's it's not it's not ideal. No offense, Gary hey, Taylor Fletcher. Hey, that's I'm sorry, Gary Taylor Fletcher. Sorry, Gary. Sorry, Gaz. Uh, it's yeah. I, I don't know, Ash. What's your views on the the um, the metaverse, which is Manchester United at the minute? Yeah, on the signings, I find just this is a bit of a side point, but um, quite often in the EFL, if you hear managers, they often talk about a. Uh, no dickheads uh, policy. They do. Which is, they actually which is do. very in- interesting because I've always thought like, so what, where are all the dickhead footballers? <laughs> they must be playing At for Carrington. Someone. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they can't all play for Manchester United. Well, yeah. Harry, Harry, Harry McCurdy plays for Swindon as well. Ah, oh, there, there, there we go. Yeah, of course. But do you know what I mean? Every manager, you feel like every manager says that, but we, in reality, there's probably dickheads in in every every dressing room. And I don't know, maybe maybe the Manchester United dressing room needs a bit of a kick up in the arse. We don't know what it's like really. So yeah. But uh, I think if if Ten Hag had come in and identified these players straight away and be like, oh, I want to sign Rabiot, then I don't think people would be that upset about it. They might be a bit like, it's a bit strange because he's, you know, he's not been a regular for Juventus recently mm-hmm. and, you know, he has well-known sort of attitude issues. But Ten Hag really wants him. It's part of a plan and they thought about it, so fine. But it's the fact that we're already into the season They've just lost, and now the reports they're sort of leaking reports that they've they've bid for him and they've agreed a deal, which makes it look like they don't know what they're doing, or they've just thought, "Oh shit, let's go and get Rabio," which is yeah. just bizarre. And it looks panicky. I mean, maybe they did have this plan for ages, but you know, I highly doubt that would be the case. Arnautovic, I, I don't know. I, I'm not. It, it might turn out to be decent. I, it kind of rem- reminds me a bit of when Liverpool signed Shakiri. It's slight, mm. slightly random, but he was yeah. actually quite good for sort of, sort of depth. But again, Manchester United have only made one, let's call it marquee signing in Martinez, yeah. which in a position that I don't really think was a priority. And I think they really need to sign someone else as a marquee signing. To, one, to sort of get that positive feeling around the club and the fans, but also because they actually need a really good player in that probably around the middle of the park and Arnautovic is just clearly not that guy um so mm. that's why you know like you said saying they're putting in like 7.6 million pound bids that's not that's not the kind of players that Manchester United want to be signing but that's that's not to say he will be terrible. yeah it's it's not the type of signing that Manchester United make typically mm. um you know maybe but, that's a good thing though because they keep signing these thing. big money flops so I'm not against not Paying much money and just making you know, small money sensibly. flops, then yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, just the seven million pound flops. But he, I know he's got Premier League experience, he might be all right, but he's not going to take him to top, you know, back to the top, which is where they want to be. I just don't, if it was say an Arsenal to to bid for Arnautovic, I, that would make a bit more sense to me, you know, Arsenal, the strikers that they have, 
uh, Jesus and the attackers that they have, getting some experience, a uh, bit of a wild card man in Arnautovic kind of makes sense to me. I could see why for 7.6 million, relatively low risk. But for Man United, when you've got someone like Ronaldo, very, I think, not similar players, but not too dissimilar. It's it's a very weird... I'd like to go to the... I'd like to see Manchester United all or nothing, is what I'd like to see. <laughs> um, and see what goes on behind the boardroom. Um, it'll be... It'll be it's interesting, isn't it, Manchester? They always seem to be this, I don't want to say circus, but it kind of is a circus. This whole sort of rigmarole of Manchester United keeps Manchester United in. But what can you do? Um, we'll move on from Manchester United. Because we always, last season, it was all Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. Now it's still, it's still Manchester United. Um, but maybe we'll be able to move away from Manchester United, but maybe not after the last weekend's performance. Premier League relegation predictions time. Um, yeah, maybe we might be able to move away from Manchester United. Yeah, you know, hopefully. Maybe not. Uh, uh, I should do a jingle for this, but I do not have time. I'm very sorry. Uh, so let's talk about Premier League prediction, uh, predictions. Relegation predictions. I've just made like a new corporate buzzword there, like synergy predictions there. <laughs> um, let's talk about who might get relegated from the Premier League uh, this season. So I will come to Chris first. And Chris, I did actual research today. Uh, and your bottom three from last year were Watford bottom, Newcastle, uh, and then Southampton. Those were your three choices last season. So that's, a, that's one out of three. Um, yeah, not great, you, was it? No, yeah, of course. Uh, you spoke about how Newcastle are just there's a bit of a cloud over Newcastle. I think that's what Ash said about your prediction. You know, I agree with Chris. Newcastle are not good. They're not in a good place. Um, but your three choices for relegation this season. Hit me with it. Hit the hit the pod with it. Well, I must admit, my relegation predictions have changed within a week because good. If you'd have asked me a week ago, I'd have said certain teams. Yeah. But obviously, after seeing like the first games of the season, it's kind of like, oh, I might have to change up a bit because, like, the, yeah, it's it's a very tricky one. I still think Bournemouth are going to go down. I mean, don't be wrong; it's, it's a great win that they got against Aston Villa. I hear an ice cream van. Is that just me? <laughs> yeah, no, that is outside my house. Yeah, fantastic. Go get yourself a ninety-nine. Yeah. I was in. Wait, Trevor, I... The pod here. <laughs> I was at Brighton. Uh, over the... I was, if you've not noticed, four pound for a ninety-nine. Uh, oh, unbelievable! Disgusting. The Pride Festival, disgusting. Carry on, Chris. Oh, disgusting. Yeah. So, I, I I think Bournemouth will still go down. Don't get me wrong. It was a fantastic result that they got at home against Aston Villa. But obviously, obviously, Gerard's Aston Villa records mm. pretty much exactly the same as Gary Neville's at Valencia. But yeah, <laughs> I, I mean, I, I mean, I could apologise to Ash about that because I was a bit Gerard faithful. But now oh. I'm, and now I'm starting to sour on. Yeah, of course, Stephen Gerrard. Um, <laughs> but um. Yeah, no, I still think Bournemouth are going to go down. But Bournemouth got a very good championship squad, but I, I don't think it's strong enough for the Premier Joe League. Joe Rothwell not going to light up the Premier League, Chris? I mean, I, I hope he does, being a former yeah, Oxford player and that. And I did see that they signed uh, Neto earlier, Barcelona's backup goalkeeper. That's and, such a weird signing for them. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it, it's a bit of a strange one. For from Bournemouth, Barca to Bournemouth. Yeah. Yeah, well, st- staying by the beach, isn't he? Yeah. I suppose, but... <laughs> Yeah, so Bournemouth for definite, and then oh, the other two, blimey, oh, tough, isn't it? It's very, a tough. It's, it's, I was very, thinking about this earlier. Very, very it's, tough. Because if you would have said last week, I, I would have said Fulham, but Fulham played really well against Liverpool, and I and like I actually maybe I've got maybe I've got a lot of faith in Marco Silva, and that, no. that he that he he actually keep them up. And that, so I'm not going to say Fulham. It's very much down to Fulham on mid. How how many goals could how many? I don't I can't remember how he scored many last year. Mitrovic was that he got, 45, I think it was 43. I think it was 43. Like, and 44. How many of those can translate to actual Premier League goals? You know, obviously there's sort of a Championship tax there. If he can score 15, then you know that's not bad for Fulham. Yeah, and that might keep him up. But and I, mean, and I must two, say, got, I must say, Joe Paulini look like looks like a class signing as well. Yeah. He had a very yeah. good game. So Liverpool. you're not saying you're not saying Fulham. I'm not saying Fulham. Um, it, 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 this might be because I can't stand Frank Lampard, but I'm going to say Everton. <laughs> oh, okay. and that, I mean, yeah. it, it, was, it was a very scrappy game against Chelsea mm. on on Saturday for Everton, and was it they they lost two players for injury, two defenders, and all right, they bringing in Conor Cody that could be a clever signing because 
bit of leadership back there in that, but I, I just don't think Everton have got that good of a squad, to be honest. Like mm. it's it's pretty, like they've lost one of their key players in Richarlison, haven't really replaced him. I mean, people would say, oh, Dwight McNeil. Let's not forget, Dwight McNeil played 38 games for Burnley last season, scored zero, got one assist. That's very good output for a winger. Isn't it? How many attack? Well, who is, even is Everton's attack? Bearing in mind that uh, Calvert Lewin's injured, is so Ross got... still there? He, 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 he didn't even play. Like, I think I think he was injured. I think he was injured as well. Um, Wasn't he suspended from last season? Oh, he might have been suspended. Be on red actually, card, yeah. like I respect last that. Last I respect yeah. that. That is upheld. I think if it's a new season, wipe that slate clean. Yeah, yeah, that's very harsh. Um, I also on on that Ash. Sorry, I think I saw this fact last week. I think Jensen Button, if he ever returned to F1, he is banned. He's got a grid place penalty for his next race. <laughs> Still so, on. He's like 45 years old. Yeah. Or something. So, yeah. Sorry, Chris. Go on. Yeah. I, I, I can't remember who they played up front. I mean, they, they didn't do a lot, to be fair. Oh, anyway. Speak to them. Uh, like, I, I know maybe. Anthony Gordon. It, maybe. I, I know Anthony Gordon played because he's got a horrible haircut as well. He's all blonde <laughs> and that. You've like, really been but, on the haircuts, haven't you, this weekend? Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 can't, I can't talk myself, to be fair, with my hair. But, um, yeah, of course. Yeah. No, so obviously I've I've said Bournemouth, I've said Everton, and oh, this this last one. Oh. Apparently it was Gordon up front, by the way. Oh, it was Gordon up front. Yeah, with Dwight McNeil and Demario Gray behind, according to life score, but I don't know how reliable. But Demario Gray is good, in fairness. He, he, he's hot and cold. He's, mm. <laughs> he's a bit like Katie Perry. He's hot and cold. Um, so you've got uh, Bournemouth, Everton, and then your last relegation prediction is, Chris? Oh, oh, am, am I going to say Southampton again? I, I'm tempted to say Southampton again. I mean, it might be reactionary because obviously opening day defeat in that, but I, I just think they rely so heavily on James Ward-Prowse. Mm. And that, and like, I, I think Joe Aribe was a good signing, but then you look at like other players that they've signed, like, run heavily on like young players to keep them in, in the Premier League. And that, I mean, obviously, they signed that Gavin Bazzuni from um, Manchester City. Yes, like, very, like, he is a good young goalkeeper. And I know mm. he's highly thought of like Republic of Ireland, but of, that's a bit of a baptism of fire, isn't it? Just chucking him in in yeah. like the Premier League straight away at his young age and they've sound like other I, I can't remember their names but they sound like other like quite y- young players as well and I like, comical bit... and goal by Salasu by the way oh, yeah. Oh, yeah yeah but, like he, he's, he's just a weird player Salasu like he does one thing brilliant and then like the next thing like he does something like that yeah it's like you, you never know what you're gonna get with him um and like the thing is, like with Hassan Hoot as well, he's such a weird manager. Like he'll go on like a like five game winning run, and then they won't win like the next eleven. Like it's like they're they, they, a... they, it's the nine nil loss that's incoming at some point this season. Yeah, this yeah, so. exactly. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, I I I, I, I will I, I do think Southampton will. I've locked it in, Chris. Your your three relegation predictions are Southampton, Everton, Bournemouth. Yeah, official. That's official, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so that's that's not going to be changed. So um, I don't I don't disagree with your reasoning. I think it's very difficult. Um, but Ash, any any comments before we move on to yours on Chris's prediction? No, I'm actually spoiler. I'm probably broadly agreeing with with Chris. What, the only thing I would say is that, and it's to touch on the Chris uh, point Chris already made actually is about Everton's um, signings and. I think the leadership and players like Tar- I know Tarkowski got relegated Burnley last season, but having players like Cody Tarkowski in that team, I think, will really lift the spirit of the team. I, and although I just said they haven't got very good attacking players, I think a lot of the Premier League is actually if you can not concede goals and be strong defensively, usually they will do well. They're yeah, Wolves couple- are, are very much testament to that. I feel yeah. uh, Brighton maybe last year or season before. They've always been quite good defensively, so I agree with your insight there. Yeah, I, I mean, I mean, just speaking of Conor Cody, I find it baffling Wolves are letting him go. Like, obviously, he's a club captain and that, and he's been like longer serving player, and he, he seems to do well in that sort of sitting in the middle of the back three. I'm, I find it quite baffling that they're actually mm. letting a player of his quality go. In that, yeah, I think one. they're moving to four at the back. I've, uh, oh, I've heard that's the the idea, and Cody yeah. doesn't have that long left on his contract, so. It's one of them where I, I, I'm not sure how old he is actually, but um, I think they're just taking it, taking the money while they can. And if they're not going to play that yeah. formation this season, then 
maybe he's not worth having around. But yeah, he's, yeah. he's a bit of a strange one. Okay. Um, Ash, your three picks for relegation this season. Last season, I'll give you some insight. You said Watford. Uh, you also said Newcastle United. <laughs> it's like we didn't know that they. I was under Bruce. Yeah, fair. it's yeah. like we didn't know. That we worry about you, yeah, Steve. We worry about you, yeah. Steve Bruce. Uh, you also you then said Everton for the lols. You said <laughs> as a joke Everton. You were quite close to that. Yeah. And then you also said you were going to be controversial last season, and you said Burnley, which was actually right, obviously. That's so, not bad. I'm I'm quite happy. Other than missing three, Norwich, which is as me float was saying, two out of three ain't bad. <laughs> and I missed Norwich. Norwich was the one I didn't get, and they were clearly. How the worst did you? Thing. Neither of you get Norwich. It was incredible. Well, we, we both said there was going to be dark horses last season. Look how that, a moment, look how that a moment of madness. It was <laughs> our first madness. season on the pod. You know, a lot of nerves coming yeah, on the pod. You kind of said that. But what are you, you saying then, Ash? I'm going to be very anti South Coast, a bit like Chris, and also relegate <laughs> Bournemouth <laughs> and uh, Southampton. Oh wow! Okay, but it's a bit. Con- <laughs> Okay, last season, I remember we had the conversation on the pod because quite a few people picked Southampton and I said that Southampton was there because I thought R- Ralph Hassan who was a good manager. And that's, that's not really changed, but it just feels like they're going backwards. They're not... Yeah. They're invested in younger players, which, okay, fair enough, but they're unproven at this sort of like... At this level, we don't really know. Like someone like Lavia, like is he going to be... He looked quite mm. good, but is he going to be good across an entire season? We don't know. They've not, yeah, they seem to have neglected their squad quite a lot. I'd, and the, at the end of last season, they were terrible. And they've, like, started this season in a similar vein. And unless they start signing some players, I'm really not, you know, feeling confident about Southampton. But I have a feeling that Hassan Hootel might not last that long. In the, he might might have an early bath, you might say. Ooh, in the, this we need season. to talk about that. We need to, we'll do that in another episode of the managerial early baths, of course. Yeah, um, but I, I think he is a good manager. He could do a job in, for someone else in the Premier League. But mm. I, I feel like it's one of them where he's been there too long, mm. and he 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 needs to leave, and probably Southampton need to leave him also because the, you know, when a manager's ideas just stops being, you stop listening after a while. Mm. But anyway, that's that's Southampton. So. I think they'll probably be 18th, maybe. Um, Bournemouth, uh, uh, they have a really good had a really good win against Aston Villa at the weekend, like Chris said. As as I've been saying, I've been banging that drum that Steven Gerrard is probably the most overrated manager in the Premier League. Um, actually, I'm going to say he's definitely the most overrated manager in the Premier League. Um, but anyway, I if you look at their squad, it's I think it's fair to say it's not that different to the one that went down a couple of years ago. So it's and they haven't signed many players. Tavernier is interesting. He might be quite good, but again, not really mm. tested at um, at Premier League level. So it's hard. It's hard to see them staying up. I mean, Scott Parker went down with with um, was it them or was it Fulham? I can't remember. It's Fulham. 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 Yeah. So I, it's hard to have a faith that they'll. I, I could see them stay. They're not. They are, I don't think they'll be as bad as Norwich were or anything. But it's just hard to see how they'll stay up if you compare them to some of the other teams. But Again, now we come on to the last one, which I think is, is really huge. hard, and I, I really don't know to be honest. But I say there's there's several teams that it could be. We've, so Chris has already mentioned Everton. That, I think that's a fair shout. They, that yeah, we've already spoken about that. I think Brentford in their second oh, season bounce. might struggle a Brentford. bit. I'm not sure I'm going to put them in, but that I don't think they've progressed. And second season know, second syndrome, season syndrome there we might go. struggle a bit. Who else? We got Leeds. I'm not confident on them either. I know they won at the weekend, but the players they've signed again, I don't really know anything about them. I think they've still got one of the the worst depth in terms. Does that make mm. any sense? Yeah, the least sense. I'll allow it. Squad, squads in the Premier League. Yeah. And they've got some, in some positions, they really sort of lack quality, in my opinion. So maybe them. I don't know. Even Nottingham Forest. I mean, we haven't mentioned them yet, but mm. sorry, Will, in advance. Um, <laughs> they're, they're winning the league this year. They had to sign a lot of players because they loaned a lot last year to get promoted in the championship. But let's remember they came through the playoffs. Fulham and um, Bournemouth were significantly better than them across mm. the season. Yeah, yeah, we're probably tipping, you know, Bournemouth for relegation and not uh, Nottingham Forest. And we don't again. They've si- signing a lot of players, as we know, is not always the formula for success. So mm. oh, I am tempted to put them in there. Oh, it's tough. It's tough. 
I am going to. I'm going to say, Ting, do yours. <laughs> and I'll come back with a third one at, at the end. No, I've got. I've got to lock it in. I've got to lock it in. You've got Bournemouth, Southampton. What I genuinely, in? genuinely, I don't know. It's very tough, isn't it? I'm going to say Leeds. Wow. wow. Sorry, Leeds fans. Wow. But I, I hope it's not Leeds. But locked in. Leeds. Yeah, yeah, because you're Jesse Marsh's number one fan. I wow. am. I have Jesse Marsh. Together, not so I don't more. think he's got the tools in the squad. And bearing in mind they've lost Rafinha and. Yeah, uh, well, Camphers didn't really play much last season anyway, but mm. I don't know. I just think they might struggle. But like I said, I really don't know with this last relegation pick, so I'm not saying that yeah. with a lot of confidence. To it. it could be any one of those teams. I wouldn't be surprised. I think there's quite a lot of teams that are a similar yeah. level down there at the bottom this season. Yeah, yeah. I think I think it could be very tight. Um, so you've gone for those three, Chris. Any any sort of final thoughts on Ash's relegation predictions there? No, no, to be fair, like 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 Barn said, like it's, it, it's, it's it, I'd probably say it's like one of the toughest like to pick like for this season, like who's going to go down, and that like like Barn said, there's just so many teams that that you think could be in and around there, and that um, and yeah, obviously I, it has surprised me. He has gone with Leeds because, like I said, he is a big fan of Jesse Marsh, but I think he has made like good reasons as to why Leeds Leeds could be sort of down there with their sort of lack of lack of depth and like if they have to rely on the youngsters. I mean o- Oxford have one of Leeds youngsters on loan as yeah. well. So please don't recall him. Thank you. Yeah please that's don't what, that's, that's what I'm gonna say, Jesse. Don't um, recall debate. Him. Okay. So I'll quickly do mine because we've covered a lot of ground there. You I'm not I'm just basically gonna repeat what you said, but I think Bournemouth goes down. I, I just don't think of all the teams, they're probably one of the weaker sides. Um in there obviously being a newly promoted team. Uh I'm also then going to say Everton, so I'm going to agree with Chris. Um, obviously, a bit of time left in the, in the transfer window, but just after last year, I don't know. Nothing screams at me that they've changed anything uh, this year. I'm, I'm also very worried for Brighton in that respect, but not worried to a point where I think they get relegated, but worried that they'll sort of go slightly backwards. Um, and then finally, I think I'm going to go Brentford, just for second season syndrome. Uh, teams will probably find out, or they'll get found out a bit, a bit more. Um, but they obviously drew with Leicester opening day, didn't they? Yeah, so I, I think C- they come be, back as well. Yeah, yeah. They, they might good be, point. They it's, lost it's Ericsson that, as well, haven't they? Who was they've lost very influential. Ericsson, um, but it could be Brentford, it could be Forest, obviously, for the reasons that Ash said. Um, Leeds as well in there. I'm gonna say Villa. Nah, I'm not gonna say Villa. I think that'd be fine, but just because of I don't know, I didn't think Gerard. No, it was Lampard. I was sort of a, a more annoyed at, wasn't it? Yeah, I was more annoyed at Lampard getting the job than Gerard getting the job. So I think Villa be fine, but it's very, it's very tough. I, I don't know. So yeah, those are my three choices: Bournemouth, Everton, Brentford. Uh, which I think is a bit crazy to think, um, because you would think you know, Everton in recent years. There's always been three or four worse teams, more worse teams than Everton and, and Brentford, but I don't know. It's 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 going to be a very difficult Premier League to to watch and see this year, especially if you're a fan of any of the teams that could go down, any of those sort of seven or eight teams. Can I All just it say that one bad run of form? Gone. But none of us have relegated Fulham, and I kind of feel that's only because they play really well against Liverpool. Yeah, last true. Week. Yeah. I feel like if we'd done this I, week I, I, ago, yeah, I probably I wouldn't have said Leeds and I would have said yeah. Fulham. <laughs> but because uh, they, they, they another team that's not really got great depth. And I I have faith in Mitro as a striker. I think he can, you know, it's proven he can bag the goals. But the supply to him, I'm not so big on. But um, yes, yeah, yeah. see what they, I think they are going to do stuff in the transfer window, similar to Bournemouth, so... Yes, it's hard to say, but yeah, I, I just Fulham. think, like Chris said earlier, Fulham. I think last, if we'd done this last week, we'd probably have slightly different predictions. Fulham are definitely going to be this year's Norwich, where they definitely just go down by like October, yeah, exactly. and we all look at that next year's pod and we're thinking, why did none of us choose Fulham? Well, it's because Mitra scored twice against Liverpool. Uh, yeah. So anyway, okay, let's do. Let's move on from the Premier League predict uh, relegation predictions. We'll try and post that. We didn't even post the top four last week. Been so busy. Uh, we'll try and post these, but comment down below. Who do you think is going to get relegated this season? Um, let's quickly do a little bit of time on fancy Premier League tips. 
and then we'll uh and then we'll do some Oxford United content because we can. Um but fantasy Premier League boys, how how did you I don't know I'm 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 top in a couple of leagues, but you know, I don't want to brag, humble brag. But um <laughs> any any players that you think could be very good this year, uh, or in, in fantasy Premier League, or people that you should be avoiding, maybe. Chris, how about you? Uh, well, avoid anyone I pick because Good. I'm, I'm I'm in the relegation spot again. <laughs> sort of. It's been tough. It, it's not yeah. been easy, has it, Chris? It hasn't. No, no, it hasn't. <laughs> easy. Um, <laughs> I mean, I mean that that Erlen Haaland's a good player, isn't he? he, he oh, he, he, he looked player. he looked very not good. Bad. He looked very yeah. good. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it just made me laugh how that Rory Jennings like put him as his like transfer flop for the season. I was like, <laughs> no, he, he ain't gonna flop. I mean, I know I know a lot of people saying he ain't gonna score. As many as people think, but you, you, you just watch them like Harlan play. You, you just see the determination in him that he wants to sort of prove like his doubt was wrong. And like you look at his goal scoring record, like not just like Bundesliga and like like the other leagues he's played in, but like looking like his record in the Champions League, he's done it on like the very big occasions. And that so, I just like, think it's hard to flop in a system like Pep's. Yeah, you're you're bought for the system. Maybe not Jack Grealish, arguably, but it's very hard to flop. Similar to Liverpool, it's very hard for Liverpool players to flop because you are bought in because you can intensely press and, and things like that. So yeah, yeah. But but to, to be fair, I, even though I, even though I didn't pick him, I, I should be picked Rashford instead of him. But oh, think, you're a silly goose. Yeah, I, I am a silly. And considering this is an Arsenal player as well, I think Gabriel Martinelli would be a very good pick because he's he's listed as a midfielder. Yeah, I I put him in. Uh, I I had Odegaard in. And then on Friday afternoon, I changed it for Martinelli. I was very happy about that. Yeah, and and I think like like obviously using like the FIFA chemistry links, obviously him and Jesus being both Brazilians, I think they'll link up well with with one another as well. So yeah, if I had to if I had to pick a player for for the viewers to pick, yeah, I would pick on. Gabriel Martinelli. Very good. I wasn't expecting that, but that is what we're definitely doing for this segment. Your number one pick for fantasy uh, Premier League, uh, Ash. Who is your uh, sort of your one-stop shop? If you had to pick one player, who is it? Well, I should say as well, similar to Chris, that I was, had a complete shocker <laughs> as I feel very unqualified to be giving out uh, fancy nah, tips. That's fine. There's a there's a league with my uh, my uni friends, and there's 34 people in it, and I'm 31st. <laughs> oh no! It's that's very the relegation cool. zone, isn't I am it? Above, I am above Chris in the uh, in the in our one so you know that's not not so bad my fantasy pick though i'm gonna say i've got him in my team he didn't do very well last week and he's probably not going to do very well next week because they are playing tottenham but i'm gonna say kai Havertz. um Ooh. i don't think that many people have him in their team and currently i don't think chelsea really have that many strikers i suppose they got brozier um but i'm gonna assume that because they're selling Timo Werner to Leipzig as well. I saw that. Earlier. left. Yeah. That, so I'm imagining that Havertz is going to play a, a lot as that sort of central striker, at least for the early part of the season anyway. So probably worth a pick um, just based on that. And he's not the sort of, for like a top six team, usually the striker prices are sort of like above the sort of double digits. I think Havertz is about eight. So he's slightly yeah. cheaper. I know he's not necessarily, an, you wouldn't describe him as a natural goal scorer, but just the fact that he's playing up front for a top six team and he's probably the cheapest striker that you can get, I'm going to say him. That's a, that's a very good choice. That's a very good choice. Um, Chris, any any thoughts on that? Or do you think that's a quite a shrewd choice by Ash Barnes there? I, I do think it's a shrewd choice, although like sort of moving a bit of a side point away from fantasy, I still think Chelsea do need that sort of number nine they sort do, of striker. They? And that, is I mean, Brozier that player, though? Do you think for them? I, I don't think he is. It's like, like personally, it, it might be a bit of English bias here, but I think Tammy Abraham was a bet. Well, he's is a better player. God, yeah, I thought, I thought, than, yeah. than Brozier when he was at Chelsea. And obviously, they let Tammy Abraham go. And that, mm. and what, like, yeah, too fair. You never know. Tuchel might put faith in Brozier, but I also do think that maybe with like the new ownership and that, yes, they've brought in Sterling and Koulibaly, but. Maybe they might look to sort of break that sort of number and nine and Cucurella as well. Yeah, oh, that, that, that was us last week saying, Pep, you're not signing him. You're not signing him. <laughs> so he didn't sign him, he just went to Chelsea instead. Yeah, but uh, maybe like the new ownership will look to like break that sort of number nine curse and bring in like a big sort of name striker. Who that would be, I don't know. 
in that, but yeah, be interesting one to see. Fantastic. Uh, so Kai Havertz is Ash Barnes' uh, FPL uh, top tip, something like that. Yeah. Who's your um, pick? Because you've done so well. In, well, here we go, Chris. This is my top pick. Um, it's Danny Ward. Uh, it's a good the, choice. Leicester goal, the, the Leicester goalkeeper. No, I think uh, genuinely, because Leicester sold Schmeichel, which was very weird, sort of, uh, he, it's such a weird transfer out and also to Nice, which is nice. Uh, but such a weird uh, sort of transfer, but it does leave Leicester's goal with them two goalkeepers, uh, Ward and Iverson. Iverson, not sure. Um, but they're both four million pound goalkeepers, both very cheap, which means that you can save money there. You know, I had Edouard Mendy and he was five mil, maybe 5.5. So it's give me an extra mil to play with, uh, essentially. So uh, I'm not, I'm not too, not too, I'm not too displeased. I'm happy, basically, that I'm able to. I was able to sort of spend a bit more money elsewhere to get some more points. But two lesser goalkeepers. I actually literally have both in because I didn't know who would be number one. I still don't know. I think Ward played at the weekend. Um, but yeah, it is Danny Ward, isn't it? It is Danny Ward. Yeah. It is yeah. Danny Ward. Yeah. So I, I, I picked one of the Leicester goalkeepers, and you know, Leicester always under Rogers play quite well. Um, I think they have some relatively easy, easy fixtures, but. We'll see. That's my top tip. But there's our top tip. We have a striker, two strikers, technically a midfielder, actually, Chris. So striker, yeah. midfielder, uh, and a goalkeeper. Defender, just say Kukurela because he's the best player in the world. Even though he's not <laughs> going to play. But... He's not, <laughs> they, they bought Chilwell and then got Kukurela, which was so weird. It's very weird. But anyway, uh, let's move on. Anyway, from fantasy football, we'll keep, we'll keep up to date on fantasy football because I'm still top. And then we'll stop talking about it when I'm <laughs> not top. So... Um, but no, let's talk about Tyler Goodrum's first Oxford United goal in. Oh, it's fantastic! Huge. Yeah. Clap, clap the young man. Clap the clap, young yeah, man. the um, yeah in El Universico, Oxford versus Cambridge. Um, <laughs> it was, I think it was his first. I think it was his league debut. I think. Uh, yeah. I think he's came on. He's come on the. He's come on in the pizza pot paint surprise trophy before <laughs> I, I can't remember what it's called nowadays it's probably changed name but um, he's papa john still he's a papa john's fantastic um quick question ranking of papa john's dominoes and pizza hut which one are you putting top in terms of pizzas oh. quick one mm, tough I'm, I'm going pizza hut i think dominoes is a bit saucy dominoes is a bit and saucy. i'm going papa john's bottom oh, wow. because i've never had it oh okay chris yeah. Thoughts? I mean, yeah, I've, I've never had Papa John, so I think that that's going to the bottom as well. Yeah, fair. And I, I, I'd probably put Domino's top because I love a bit of sauce. I do. So. Yeah, <laughs> bit of sauce. Yeah, good, fantastic, great. I really caught you off guard there. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, but Tyler Goodrum's first on a goal last minute. He came on in the 85th or something minute for Matty Taylor. Uh, it was a lovely. It was a lovely little pass from uh, Lewis Bates, the new loney from Liverpool. Uh, lead sorry that we that we signed and chris mentioned earlier uh goodrum just sort of t- dribbled past one or two uh cambridge defenders right in the top bins where the spiders live uh it was fantastic robinson running across the pitch uh running across the touchline i should say uh and celebrating well first one of the season uh a last minute winner first game home game of the season you can't really talk talk much more about that lads it was great wasn't it Oh, it, 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 was, it was superb scenes, weren't it? I mean, oh, yeah. it, it, it's a great goal as well, isn't it? From it's a really good goal. Like, it's a like, really good goal. Like, obviously, he's, he's beating his man, and he's like you said, he's literally just put it in like the one place where the keeper wasn't going to get to it, and that. And too far, I really enjoyed his sort of like post-match interview as well. He was just he was absolutely buzzing, buzzing. Oh yeah, as he and was. that like he, he was so elated, and it was his nineteenth birthday yesterday as well. So what a birthday yeah, weekend! Goodrum. What a birthday weekend that is. I mean. Hopefully he didn't have as many as I did Saturday night, but hopefully he did have a few <laughs> few celebratory drinks to celebrate scoring his first goal for Ox United. And it's good it's good that Oxford have got up and running. I mean, obviously I I only saw like the game like like a couple minute high, that couple minute high like yeah, video yeah. they got on YouTube and that but I heard like a lot of people saying that Stuart Finley was superb. He was it, good in the friendly we watched and he he's yeah. been very good again, I've I've heard as well. So he looks like a very and, good signing. And, and like Barnes said on the on the last pod, like getting him him getting him in on a four year deal is absolutely huge. Yeah, and that and like he, he's one of them that he, he's quite big built as well, but he's, he's just huge. so he's he's so comfortable on the ball, and that like he, he's he's a joy to watch. 
He's very funny. In the celebrations, he's I'm pretty sure he's the one that brings everyone down into the bundle. Uh he runs across and literally, <laughs> literally grabs his like his legs go jelly and he just sort of uh brings everyone down. He's he's a he's a man mountain, Stuart Finley. <laughs> um but yeah, what do you boys think Fox this year? Good, yay, nay, maybe. For promotion, not, I imagine. I'm not sure. What I would say is that we're we're notoriously I know last season we we're actually all right, but we're notoriously slow starters. So yeah. I'm not surprised that we have not really set the world alight. I think it's fair to say in our first couple well, of no games. Well, no one else, because only, I think, Peterborough, two games in, they're the only team that have won both games. Every team has either lost, drawn, or whatever, like no 100% yeah. records. Well, that's interesting. I, I, and to be fair, you can understand that with Peterborough as well. I mean, that, that Johnson Clark Harris, he's going to score you oh, goals score in, buckets, in League One. And that, that, obviously, if they keep him, I know they did, they did lose. That Sammy Smodix earlier on in the window, but Peterborough they're they're quite savvy with their business, aren't they? They tend to pick yeah. up really good players, like especially like from like the lower divisions, like even like non-league, mm-hmm. and they took they developed them into like great players. And that like that was another thing with like Bournemouth. Obviously, they got that Sariki Dembele who they signed from Peterborough, who obviously Peterborough got from like the non-league. In that, but um, in, in terms of Oxford, I don't think we've got enough quality to go up. As as one of the top two, I think like teams like Peterborough, playoffs, De- Derby, Sheffield Wednesday. You, you could even include Portsmouth in there. I think they've got mm. too strong of a squad, but uh, I, I think I think c- can easily get into well, not e- I think we can get into the playoffs, but I think it's going to be a lot trickier this season. Like, I think there's that's the thing with, like League One that like you could probably pick out Tough 15, 15 yeah. teams that can easily get into that top six. Yeah, it's it's tough every year. Uh, I've heard we're in talks with a striker on loan, uh, and potentially another striker to buy, uh, and then also a fullback or cover up the fullback position. So yeah, we definitely see how cover it, at fullback. We definitely do. Um, although I heard Steve Seddon had a good game at the weekend, so That's good, good on hear. Steve Seddon. Um, but we'll see how Oxford get, and we'll keep we'll keep an eye on that. But. Um, yeah, it's everything that I wanted to discuss with the boys on this fine Monday evening um did you boys have anything else that you wanted to discuss before we uh depart our ways uh, are you regretting putting man united in your top four prediction <laughs> no i think they will probably sign frank as yacht no they won't <laughs> they won't um <laughs> Can't say I, straight, folks. I, I, I i really i try so hard um i reckon they'll come i reckon they'll make one or two signings this year and i think the ten hag system will come to fruition once they drop McCrud. I think they just need to get rid of that and I think things will happen. Good vibes will uh, energise throughout that team once players are gone basically and not playing. So, so what I've got there with the signings is that Marco Anatovic is going to be a 30 <laughs> goal a season striker. Yep. The ta- Gary Taylor Fletcher was wasn't here in that one Blackpool season. So... <laughs> <laughs> I bet he's got like two goals or something like that. Let's, have a, quick, from let's, outside have, the box. let's have a quick look. Well, you, you talk amongst yourselves. I want to get Gary Taylor Fletcher's. Uh, what would I get it on? Just Wikipedia, right? Yeah, it's a reliable source, isn't it? <laughs> it's a reliable source. No, no one can edit that. No one can edit that. Premier League, he got six. Okay, apologies. I apologize, six. Gary. <laughs> Gary, yeah, he scored six. <laughs> uh, he was prolific. In league in the third division, it was called the third division back then. Uh, he got nineteen in one season for uh, Lincoln. Um, yeah, good old Gary. Anyway, um, that was everything from me. Uh, Ash, anything from you? Any AOB before we depart? There's a prime fixture on tonight. Um, if you love uh, teams that always seem to be getting relegated from the Premier League, um, West Brom versus uh, Watford, you get to see a bit of uh, Steve Bruce do his magic on the touchline. I think that's the first time they've played each other in the Championship since like 2010. Yeah, I saw that. Snap. Yeah. That's that's yeah. mad. Yeah. Wild, wild. Yeah. But yeah, no, what that is a his prime Championship viewing. It really is. <laughs> yeah. Got to get behind Steve Bruce, boys. Yeah, we, we absolutely do. Anyway, let, let's close it there. But thank you very much, everyone who's watched uh, and watching. This episode, we're on 82 subscribers. We gained five subscribers in the last week, which is amazing. Um, we are nearly there to 100. So please do smash a like on that video. Uh, and we'll be trying to get some more content out there. Smash a like, follow, do all the good youtube stuff. Share it with a friend. Uh, what else can you do? Throw your phone at someone with 
<laughs> Airdro- airdrop our logo to someone. You can do that if you have an Apple phone. I don't know if you do if you have an Android phone. Who knows? Um, but anyway, it's I'm rambling now. So it's goodbye from me. It's by waving goodbye from Chris and waving goodbye from Ash. Uh, we'll see you very soon. Goodbye.